Today we're talking about a flight with Singapore Airlines, specifically on the new A350, which also has a new seating arrangement from Bangkok to Singapore. This is a method to verify the status of this airline after a specific period of more than three years in order to observe how everything may have improved or potentially deteriorated. When we examine a photograph from the past, such as the former Singapore Airlines business class, it is certainly displaying its antiquity. And the brand new A350, yeah, in this fresh seating arrangement, I thought it would definitely bring a lot of joy and excitement to passengers on board. What struck me right from the start about Singapore Airlines in the A350 is that this new seating already delivers a certain, let's say, visual quality. However, it has all become even more compact and constrained. Therefore, the seating area is, in my opinion, slightly smaller and more confined, even though the overall space is larger, because there are so many little playful things included, which contribute to the limited size and tighter feel of the area. Undoubtedly, you can express that we have the option on the left-hand side to hide headphones if desired. We possess the menu card inside that place, and a great deal of additional things within such a small cubbyhole. There is also room for the feet, and there is even more space underneath the feet, but the arrangement of the monitor, for example, feels so extremely close to me that I almost feel claustrophobic. So these are similar to my initial impressions, you know, following my first ever flight in a lengthy period of time. And let me tell you, this two hour flight was a real doozy. The check-in process at Bangkok airport was quite relaxed and went smoothly without any issues. You proceeded directly to this check-in counter and had the pleasure, naturally with the renowned friendliness of the Thai people, of experiencing a prompt check-in process. The department that has really gone downhill in Bangkok is the fast lane department, without a doubt. That means you can go to the fast lane as a business class and this fast lane is on the far right at the airport and on the far left is the Thai. However, we all must pass through a recently arranged fast lane which personally I do not believe is truly well organized and well thought out in terms of efficiency and effectiveness. That could have been much better, especially with the entrance on the left for the crews, babies, children and toddlers and then on the right for everyone else. And when you are brought together, you simply dive right in. Well, I believe it is a poor solution. Here, the airport in Thailand, located in Bangkok, should have had more interaction with the experts, particularly with the airlines. And perhaps even many pilots have to inquire, what are their requirements? Because, I mean, we are reaching that point. We are financially covering all these things. And I have to say... That was a lousy solution. So I go through this fast lane, which was still relatively happy that day, because I quickly get to the Singapore Airlines lounge and thought, well, it's always worth doing a little lounge hopping story. I haven't done that in a long time either. So I'm gonna swing by IFA Air on the left and also make a quick stop at Thai. And in that sense, when it comes to Turkish, it's definitely worth stopping by. That's just no fun. So I then went back to the Singapore Airlines lounge. And if you still have that beautiful time in your memory, then you know for sure that things have changed. And that is in a negative sense. Simply the cocktail they presented to me, if I reminisce about it, it resembled an ocean of something extraordinarily beautiful and captivating. And at this moment, I was given this completely unadorned glass of cocktail, which I was expected to consume. If I wanted another water, there was still a can. So we've got ourselves a new hotshot around here, and boy, is it noticeable. The quality of the food is extremely bad. Unfortunately, the good times of the Singapore Airlines lounge in Bangkok are over. And when I have had conversations with the occasional individual, have the occasional guests also noticed that on occasion as well? It is quite intriguing to see. They opted to reduce costs on the catering and they even made the decision to bring in younger staff, which is most likely a more economical choice. So the Singapore Airlines lounge didn't bring any joy anymore. The check-in process afterwards went relatively smoothly and quickly. They've set it up in an interesting way at Singapore Airlines, in my opinion. On the right, you have the business class guests who are the first to march in. And then it goes straight to the economy section for the status members. And then comes the economy. And so, of course, I got into the plane very well and quickly. The crew actually gave a really nice welcome. But when I say actually, it's because things started to get really dramatic. And I have details for you where you think, how can that actually be possible? 
in a time that we're heading into now, which, yeah, is probably going to get even worse, even for Singapore Airlines. And I mean, that is a highly acclaimed airline. And the business class offered by this airline is a visual delight. We don't want to compare that with Europe, but rather compare it in Asia. But if we compare the flight with Thai Airways, then Thai Airways is now an absolute nightmare with a 737 in a tight seating arrangement like ours in Europe. That's why if you're flying to Singapore or from Singapore to Bangkok, definitely avoid Thai. Firstly, it's ridiculously pricey and the service is extremely lousy, even worse than what Singapore Airlines already provides. Singapore Airlines still provides the finest product with the highest level of quality in this location. I'll be there at my seat, I'm getting cozy. So I took a good look at the seat first, all relaxed and stuff. And yes, that is completely acceptable. Flying is already a pleasure. You have the ability to recline. You have ample space for your feet. The screen is like truly overwhelming, you know? And I mean, you could have potentially made that a little more offset. However, that is precisely what I mean. They simply do not bother asking frequent flyers or travelers in general what their needs are. And that is a significant oversight. That is the thing, whether it is at the airport or with the airlines, they simply plan without even communicating with us about it because, I mean, we are knowledgeable about how we want to fly and they disregard our input. And I believe that the airline that takes our wishes into consideration in the future is the airline that will have the most success. And above all, it will be an airline that might even survive. We just need better communication with the airline, with the airport, especially with the security authorities and with us the guests who rely on their services for safe and efficient travel experiences. Not with any chief executive officers, not with any managing directors. We are the individuals who are constantly on the move. We know what we want, you know. After the kickoff, the service gets going. And I was really looking forward to it because I also ordered my meal. That was like, yeah, a kind of beef goulash with noodles made in an Asian style. I was in the mood and thought, oh, here we go again with a glass of champagne to start and then I'll have a few nuts and stuff and then the food comes and then I have a two hour flight. He rapidly zoomed past me like a rocket. And then the sequence of events began when the employee on board came up to me, specifically targeting me with their actions and words. I witnessed that accurately. She approached me directly from the front and inquired if I genuinely desired to consume the beef. So I was like, yeah, that's what I ordered, right? I'd love to eat that, of course. There are others here too. Want to see the menu? We have chicken here and there. Already felt they didn't have my beef with them. How about taking a look? That's like this Asian diplomacy they introduce when they don't have something. You got to somehow figure out how to convince people to take something else. Then we don't need to apologize. But of course, they're in the right place with Hon. So here with me. Is that precisely my thing? And I have to say... That was definitely a bit suspicious. And I said, no, I insist on my beef and I would like that as well, please. Yeah, sure, then she'll get it. And then I looked to see where the flight attendant is going. And then they went about four or five rows ahead. And then she talked to the person sitting there and agreed that he should have the chicken. Did he also have beef? That means they didn't have enough beef. We checked and found out there's not enough beef. So they must offer a diplomatic solution. These tiny details provide me with a wealth of information. So once we were airborne and, you know, after all the necessary checks were completed, they promptly commenced with the provision of food. I thought, that can't be true. They've set up the food right away. Not yet with the beef, but already with everything. And then there should still be salmon coming. So I thought, and what about the aperitif? And it was this young employee who gave me the feeling that she is absolutely incompetent. First flight or whatever. No clue about anything. And I thought... Do they now employ individuals at Singapore Airlines who are so inadequately trained? I placed an order for a sparkling water. However, what I received was a can of Sprite. Additionally, I requested a glass of champagne, but it was never delivered to me. I had to enforce the rules. I've been insisting for a while, okay, that's it. Because you know that always goes fast with them. And if you don't have what you ordered, the food comes and then it's already over. And above all, overcooked food. And I knew... They don't have enough beef, so I immediately said, the purserette has to handle it. And she did come. And then I said, I definitely don't want to be served by this lady, by this young lady anymore. It's no use if she pleases me with her attractiveness, but completely fails in terms of competence. I require somebody to make this flight more enjoyable for me. And not only with a pleasant attitude, but also with skillfulness. She understood, switched to another lady, and took over the service without hesitation or delay. And then I got my champagne first and I got my sparkling water first and now we're starting with the bread. 
We've seen that on prior flights. Then came the one with garlic bread. It was ice cold. Shouldn't that be warm, I ask? Should that be warm or cold? Yeah, that's tasty garlic bread. Yeah, then I want it to keep me warm too. So she's off again. She got some warm garlic bread. She brought that for me then. I already had garlic bread, so all is well. Anything is possible. I mean, we are paying a lot for it. A trip like that now costs 1,000 euros from Bangkok to Singapore and back. That used to be 400. Now 1,000. I think that's a lot of money. And the thing is not unbookable. If you spend even more on unbookable, you'll pay at least 1.5. All have become prices for less service, and there's no way we're settling for worse service. We are not going to tolerate that. We are the customer. We are the ones who are paying for the service. And if the service is bad or we don't get what we actually paid for, then we'll speak up and they better make it right. Otherwise, we want our money back. The time for compromises is over. That's out of the question. I really don't feel like it, so I still managed to have a little treat, nice glass of champagne. We had a nice red wine to go with it. Then the Oberpulser brought him up front. I have to say, Roundabout was still a pretty enjoyable journey. A delightful flight journey. But with certain restrictions, you know. You always think, well, it can't get any worse. But it got worse. Because then we are even two hours, like two hours, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, it should be approximately. So we landed pretty early after two hours. And what happened? No staff at Changi Airport. So there we were, just standing around for an additional 10 minutes, waiting for a jet bridge. How is it possible that there is a staff member at Changi Airport responsible for timely deployment of a bridge, ensuring that Singapore Airlines can also disembark on time and maintain their punctuality? I find all of this unbelievable. I truly cannot comprehend why things have deteriorated to such an extent in this specific area. But these things happen, of course, not on all flights, not with all things, but they're there. It's just that it's not all about everything being beautiful. But here there are also these problems, and luckily, I have to say, not as frequently as in Europe and specifically in Germany. I sometimes stand there and think, how can that happen? How is it possible that this is happening here at Junkie Airport just like that? And then you come through this new entry point. So, you know, you have to fill out this special application form, this health certificate before your departure. Three days before departure, crucial, everyone must fill it out. Then you get confirmation that you're in good shape and the data to go with it. And then they send you a number and it's linked to your passport. So you get there and then they've done everything new. There's hardly any staff left, everything automated. For real, Changi Airport has everything automated. Unbelievable. You put that thing there, then you go over there, clean your fingers, your thumb, and boom, you're done. And then you will receive an email containing some information. Welcome to Singapore, all of you. I mean, seriously, this automation stuff, what is going to come in the future, is absolutely unbelievable. Bangkok is like the Stone Age. For real. Stone Age. Bangkok Airport is like the Stone Age. Automation is not even an issue here. If anyone, only the ties themselves, but we as travelers ride on the gangway. I arrive there, go to the suitcase and think, let's see, the suitcase should arrive. The suitcase didn't come. It took twice as long again. That means, yeah, things have changed here at Junkie Airport, as some people have said. And then I said, it can't be true that you have to wait so long for your suitcase, even at the Junkie Airport. BTW, I recall that we sometimes had to wait a bit longer for the Junkie, because he's massive, you know. But the fact that, for example, the priority items came last and the other suitcases came first, well, so there's a lot going wrong at Changi too. Apparently, Singapore Airlines doesn't have any influence here anymore. I would definitely, if at all, fly with Singapore Airlines in Asia whenever I take such flights. I always fly with Singapore Airlines. There is not a better airline here. It would have been worse with Thai Airways. With these other Tigers and whatnot, it would have been worse. I mean, for a price that's in the price performance ratio of 1,000 euros, I mean, you gotta have it to spend it so it doesn't hurt and make you regret it later. However, it still was not the worst flight. It was all present with a small amount of pressure that we subsequently applied. All aspects will operate later, you know, and I safely reached my destination in Singapore and I am feeling extremely positive and enthusiastic about it. And to top it all off, my chauffeur failed as well. So then I got an email. Yeah, the chauffeur couldn't be found. So I waited in the queue for a taxi for an additional hour and then had to make this entry using the taxi as well because the queue was so long. Yeah, there are those days and flights where everything just falls into place. On this flight with Singapore Airlines in the A350 from Bangkok to Singapore, I'd say it was a mixed bag. I was extremely relieved when I arrived at the hotel. 
and at this hotel, which is the JW Marriott, I received excellent care as a member of the Ambassador Programme. <laughs>